All right, welcome back and thanks for tuning in again. So today I want to work on this old oil well supply engine. We made the intake valve for this uh, eh, last week, I think. Well, it's last week, my time. I'm not sure when this video is going to be up. But uh, so we got that intake valve made and installed. And I want to try to get the engine running today. We've got a couple things we've got to get to before we do that, uh, fuel related things. The engine itself, the mechanics are in pretty good shape. I've already gone through those, but uh, let's go ahead and see what the gas or the fuel setup is going to look like. Now, let's just do a quick recap for those of you that might not have seen the intake valve video. So what we have here is a, I would say 19 teens or 1920s, four horsepower hit and miss engine that was sold by the oil well supply company. Now these engines were typically sold along with a pump jack rig and they were used to pump oil. This is a hot tube engine, meaning that the only source of ignition for the actual combustion cycle is this little tube right down inside there, which is heated by a which is heated by a burner. It, it typically well it would have burnt wellhead gas or natural gas when it was uh, originally uh, installed out in the field. And that hot tube is what ignites the air fuel mixture under compression. As far as engine fuel goes, it burns the same type of natural gas or wellhead gas that you would use in the burner. So, but other than that, it's a typical four-stroke engine uh, operating on a hit and miss governing. So it uh, the engine gets up to speed, these centrifugal weights on the flywheel move out, and this lever arm here holds the exhaust valve open to let the engine coast down. So we'll, uh, we'll go into that more later once we get it running. But I've got the gas system set up here, so I've got a 100 pound propane cylinder. So we're feeding tank pressure out to a primary regulator. That's taking tank pressure and taking it down to about 10 psi. From that, we're going into a secondary regulator. That's taking the 10 psi and dropping it down to about, well, about a little over six, in, uh, six ounces per square inch, which is about 11 inches of water column. And that 11 inches of water column is being fed to this little uh, ball valve, not a ball valve. It's not a gate valve either. I'm not sure what you call that. I guess a globe valve maybe. And that's feeding it through a little orifice which is in this pipe at 25,000th or orifice and that's going into the hot tube burn. So now what we've got to do is plumb in the actual engine fuel supply. That's going to come in here through this one inch uh, elbow. We've reducing where well, we're going to reduce that down to half inch through the gas cock. This is essentially the, the throttle or how you control the mixture of uh, gas to the engine which is fed to the uh, intake valve assembly. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll start that and show you what I'm going to be doing. Guys, so since the last clip, I've added the engine fuel supply flex hose and a T on the outlet of the secondary regulator. Again, this is, um, this is still only being fed about 6 ounces per square inch of propane pressure. Same as the burner. I've added, uh, well, I think these were already on here. I filled the oilers up and... Uh, you know, finalized their installation. I cleaned up and I installed the oiler for the lower connecting rod bearing or the the, the uh, crank pin bearing, and we got a cylinder oil oiler here that's installed. So, other than that, I don't think I've done anything else. Oh, I did uh, I did put on the little leather belt for the cooling fan, so it doesn't quite sit in the uh, in the groove like I would have hoped but it'll, uh, it'll serve its purpose. And I also added this little kind of wind guard for the, the uh, I guess the air inlet for the propane burner. Let's see, let me see if I can turn a light on here. Oh, there you go. So that fitting's got the holes drilled in it to allow the draft from the propane leaving the orifice to draw in air for a combustion in the hot tube. And I've also added this uh, insulation. Actually, with that light, you can see the hot tube down there. 
This is uh, like fiberglass insulations made for high heat, made for furnaces and things like that. So I think we're pretty much ready to light the hot tube and give it a start. One other thing I've done is not really, uh, it's more aesthetic is, I think what I'm going to do with this engine is I'm going to clear coat it. And that's what we have here. So I took and I took some sandpaper and I brightened up the, the top, the edges of these letters here and uh, went and clear coated it. I like that kind of oily cast iron look. So all of this is actually clear coat even though it looks all oily. Same thing with the flywheels. The rims of the flywheels rather. This is actually a clear varnish. So it's easy to clean off and water resistant, water repellent I guess you could say. The whole thing hasn't been clear coated yet but I'm gonna pretty much do everything. I really like the look of that. So let's see. I think we can light the hot two burner. Okay, so I'm gonna turn the tank valve on. Just crack the tank valve until I hear the regulator's uh, pressure up. Then I'm gonna go ahead and open up this uh, valve on the outlet of the regulator. And I'm gonna open up the, the gas valve for the engine and just let the, uh, well, pretty much bleed the lines out. So I'm gonna open the intake valve until I can see the propane coming out. I'll close that. And I'll do the same thing with the burner valve. And once I can see the propane, propane vapor. I should say that I can't really see the vapor. I can't see the vapor itself, but if you've ever like looked at a, a grill and you see the the, the, the heat, the, the less dense air at the edge of the grill kind of disrupting the light, that's pretty much what you can see with like raw propane coming out. It almost looks like heat. So we should, have, uh, we should be clear now. Go ahead and try to light it. Don't go out on me. There it goes. So open that valve all the way. And I can just just about see the flame. I think you, you might be able to see it on the camera as well. See that? So it's a, it's a cool morning. It's probably about, it's less than 50 degrees out. I think it's like 45 or 47 degrees. So we're gonna give this a good uh, five minutes or so to warm that tube up. Uh, there's no way I'm really gonna be able to show you what's going on down there, is there? Yeah, it's burning though. I can see the heat. So we're gonna give that some time and then as far as starting it goes, I'm pretty much going to leave the gas valve closed and turn the engine over. And then as it's turning over, I'm going to slowly open the gas valve and hope that it fires. And once it, once it fires off, I'm going to leave the gas valve alone and we'll see if it continues to run. Once it is running, we can, well, we'll observe how it runs and see if maybe we need to reconfigure the gas system or adjust the intake valve spring pressure so it's a little bit of a uh, trial and error thing here okay I think we're ready for a start here hot tube still going can you see it glowing down there okay so we'll go ahead, turn all our oilers on. I think I'm running a bit too heavy of an oil here because I can feel the intake valve actually dragging. Because all this is just oil that's run out 
from the top of the valve stem. Maybe I should switch from a 30 weight to a 20 weight for the intake valve. The exhaust valve, uh, I can run the 30 weight, I think. All right, I think we're ready to go. Let me set you up on the stand here. Let's see if we got a good, good view of what's going to be going on. Should be good. It's running. It's not doing too bad either. It's a pretty nice speed. You can see why I moved it out here to the grass. The thing fires, the whole base rocks. Seems to want a double, double suck every time, double intake. Hear that? Here's our intake valve going. Yeah, it seems to be running pretty well. Let's see if we can adjust that so it uh, hits every time or doesn't double double intake. Give it a little bit more fuel. I'm just moving this the tiniest amount here. No smoke, of course. We're running on propane here. Little smoke that time. Kind of has an interesting sound when it fires. Oh, it doesn't like that. Too much fuel. Huh. Wow. Alright. Let's try to restart it. I think I richened it up too far. It stalled. Let's try to restart it.
that's about where it was before. So it doesn't seem to be a problem that we can correct with the gas valve. I wonder if it has to do with the intake valve spring. If we add more attention to this, see what that does. It doesn't seem to change anything. Got less tension. Hmm. Interesting. I wonder if we've got a uh, fuel supply issue. It seems like it wants to wants to have two cycles every time it fires. Mm, didn't like that at all. Hmm, interesting. Let's see if we can speed it up here. Easy. Try cutting the fuel back. That's strange. Sometimes it. Hmm. Sometimes it fires on the first cycle, but it sounds like it's lean. Because it seems like we're getting a little bit of extra exhaust note. Maybe if we richen it up a little bit. give it some more intake tension. Oh boy, I think we found it. Look at that. That's it. More fuel and more more intake tension. And maybe I lied. Doesn't like that. Oh, there it goes. Come on. Huh. I'm going to have to set you guys down for this. This is interesting. Let's see here. So this seems to be where it's happy right now. If I don't adjust the gas, I'll give it some more tension on the intake valve. It's 
still wants to kind of double suck. Now, let me give it some more fuel. Just a little bit more. Nope, doesn't like that. Hmm. Seems to be a little finicky. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, my battery died as the engine stalled, so... I've added a little bit of tension to the intake valve spring just by threading this nut farther down on the stem. I might, I might have to change this spring at some point, but it's got a little bit more tension on it. I don't have it locked, so we can kind of adjust it on the fly. And I'm going to try to restart it now with that little bit more tension, and uh, we'll do the same thing. Fuel supply valve is closed, I'll start cranking, and then I'll open that up as I'm cranking, and we'll see if it, if it takes off. Let me set these wrenches down here. Turn the oilers back on. Seems like I might have my cylinder oiler set a little high. Get a little bit of smoke out of it. Give it a little bit more fuel. a little bit more fuel. No, doesn't really seem... No. Nope, gave it too much fuel. Nope, doesn't like that at all. Funny. At, at a certain point, I can smell like the unburnt propane just coming back out of the exhaust. So it's definitely too. It's definitely not. It's very sensitive to overfueling. Hmm. Now let's restart it, and maybe I'll have to add more. A little bit more intake valve tension. I don't have much much thread left. Actually, that's pretty much all I all I have. Hmm. Let's try it again. It's interesting. It seems like we found a, a bit of a, a bit of a sweet spot there earlier.
Nope, Richard it up too far again. That's interesting. Well, it seems like we can't really get the thing running like I would want with the setup we have here. I don't think going any with any more attention on the intake valve is going to help. So I'm wondering if we're just not feeding it the correct supply pressure. So we know that the, the inlet to the intake valve mixer housing is a half inch pipe. We've got a half inch pipe gas cock there. I'm wondering if we should be feeding it a higher pressure. Like I said, this is only six ounces of pressure per square inch we're feeding right now. And the, the hot tube burner seems perfectly content with that. However, the, the engine not so much. I mean, it's running pretty well. It's just, I don't, I don't really like that, uh, that double intake stroke that we're doing. So I'm wondering if I need to tap the gas supply from a different point here. So I've got this regulator turned up as high as it'll go. It's, you know, about six ounces or 11 or 12 inches of water column. So I'm wondering if I need to tap the engine from the pressure outlet of the primary regulator. So right now that primary regulator is set to about 10 PSI. So there's 10 pounds in between those two regulators. So I could probably dial that regulator down to about two pounds and try feeding the engine about two pounds, but still feed the hot tube burner 11 inches of water. So, hmm, I don't know. I think that's worth trying. It shouldn't be that big of a deal. So we'll come back after I've done that. Okay, so here's the setup now. We've tapped the engine fuel from between the two, the primary and the secondary regulator. And I've also have a, I've got a gauge here measuring that pressure, and we got a gauge measuring the pressure going to the hot tube burner. So I've got this, the primary regulator backed all the way out, and even at that, I can only get the pressure down to about three and a half pounds. And at three and a half pounds, I got the hot tube burner. Let me turn that off. So we got three and a half pounds feeding the gas cock on the engine. The problem with that is, as soon as I open the gas valve, we got propane leaking by the intake valve. So even three and a half pounds is enough to unseat the intake valve. So that's not acceptable. That will not work. Unfortunately, I think if I could get this down to about a pound, it would work fine. But uh, that's not going to, not just not going to happen with this regulator. So I think we're going to go off to, we're going to have to go to plan B here. And that is add an accumulator to the supply pipe. We'll supply the engine at the same, whatever this is here, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13 inches of water. Same, we'll, we'll supply the engine at that point pressure, but we'll have uh, an accumulator here, which is basically just going to be a volume of gas that the engine can draw from without the pressure dropping. So, don't know if that's going to help us, but it's uh, where we're going to go now. So, let's set that up. Okay, well, before I go through the trouble of making an accumulator, I decided that I should put a gauge on the downstream side of this gas valve between here and the intake. When I did that, obviously I added a T-fitting here and a couple reducers and things like that just to drop it down to the gauge size. Well, I got it, after I had done all that, the thing wouldn't run very well at all. It wouldn't even run as well as it was before. So I'm thinking that maybe the additional volume of pipe that I added on the downstream side of this valve was just too much. So maybe I had too much actual volume of piping between here and the engine. So I decided to take all that off and shorten it as short as I could. So we've got the valve, a close nipple, and a street elbow going into the intake. So I'm going to 
plumb it back up with the uh, flex line, one inch flex line, right back to the regulator, and we'll see if this changes anything. Well, before I put the fuel supply line on, I wanted to show you the, uh, the innards of this valve here. So you can see the, well, let me turn this light on here. Maybe you can see now. Okay, that's better. So I'm going to open the valve, and you can see the, the tapered actual, I don't know what you call that, the valve itself. So I think they call these diamond valves because of the way, you see that cut there? The way that that cut right there and the other side is not, they're not perpendicular, it's almost tapered. So I, I did put a mark here. The sun's coming out, you can't quite see it, a little blue mark. That's where it was running good at, right there. And you can see the valve was not open very much. That's all of the flow that the thing really wanted to run. And I've, I brought another valve out here, and another one here. These are pretty similar, but the actual slot through them is just a rectangle. There's no taper onto it. So, yeah, I guess you could use these if you needed to. It's nice to have uh, an original gas valve. All right, let's keep going. Look at this guy circling right over me. Look at it. Buzzards. It's huge. Right, right over my head. I'm not giving up yet. That's a leaf. What the hell are you doing? Well, I've been playing with it for a little while, and I've had it running. And I cannot quite get it where I want it still runs it runs pretty well but we still have that that double intake intake stroke there so I don't know I think I might take this to a show and um, solicit some professional advice from a couple of the guys that I know that uh, have similar engines but let's see if we can start it back up and we'll just watch it run as it is because it still runs pretty well Thank you. 
So we really have no problem with, uh, it's kind of a goofy location for this gauge, but we really don't have any problem with volume at this point. Now, of course, we're measuring at the regulator, but you can see we're at 13 and a half inches of water, and it only drops about one inch, one inch of water column when the engine goes on the intake stroke. So the end, the regulators are having no problem supplying the pressure, or supplying the volume at this pressure. Hmm. I still think it's a pretty cool engine. Got to get it belted up to something to make it do a little bit of work. Well, at least my intake valve's working. <laughs> Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoy working on these old engines. I think this one came out pretty pretty well. I'm anxious to get it to some shows. Stay tuned. Uh, I think I'll fire this thing up at night. We'll get the, uh, the full effect of the hot tube flame. And uh, maybe we'll try to get it to shoot a little bit of, little bit of flames out the exhaust. So, thanks for watching. Alright, well, thanks for sticking in this long. So, uh, it's a beautiful October night. We got the hot tube going on the oil well supply. We got a bit of an anemic fire going back there in the fire pit. All my wood piles wet because we had a lot of rain yesterday. A couple lanterns here to see what we're doing and I think we're ready to start this thing up. Let's go ahead. I don't know how much of this you can see. Go around and turn my oilers on.
running pretty well. It's funny, the, uh, the pressure wave from the exhaust makes the, uh, makes the lantern flame flutter a little bit. Seems to be running pretty nice. Clean the flywheels up a little bit. You can see some original machining marks on there. Well, I think that's about a wrap for this video. Set this down. Thanks for watching.